rather than sit home and read morning prayer separately, we decided, the four of us, decided to come in and read morning prayer together, but still separated. And thank you for joining us, and hopefully this will be a, a nice service for everyone. And with that in mind, let us begin. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from Lord Jesus Christ. Let us say together the confession of sin as found on page 79 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may enjoy life in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all your sins through your Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and will be forever. Amen. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, Come let, let us adore, adore him. Let us say together the Venite, as found on page 82 in the Book of Common Prayer. Come, let us sing, sing to the Lord. Lord. Let, let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let, let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him in psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice, Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, Come let, us let us adore him. seek you, my soul thirsts for you, my flesh faints for you, as in a barren and dry land where there is no water. Therefore I have gazed upon you in your holy place, that I might behold your power and your glory. For your loving kindness is better than life itself. My lips shall give you praise. So will I bless you as long as I live, and lift up, lift up my hands in your name. My soul is content as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth praises you with joyful lips. When I remember you upon my bed and meditate on you in the night watches, for you have been my helper, and under the shadow of your wings I will rejoice. My soul clings to you, your right hand holds me fast. Psalm 98. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. With his right hand and his holy arm, he has won for himself the victory. The Lord has made known his victory. His righteousness has he openly shown in the sight of the nations. He remembers his mercy and faithfulness to the house of Israel. And all the ends of the earth have seen the victory of God. Shout with joy to the Lord, all you lands. Lift up your voice, rejoice, and sing. Sing to the Lord with the harp. 
with the harp and the voice of song, with trumpets and the sound of the horn, shout with joy before the King, the Lord. Let the sea make a noise in all that is in it, the lands and those who dwell therein. Let the rivers clap their hands, and let the hills ring out with joy before the Lord, when he comes to judge the earth. In righteousness he shall judge the world and the peoples with equity. Glory to the Father, to the to Son, the to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Job. Then Bildad the Shuite answered, Dominion and fear are with God. He makes peace in his high heaven. Is there, is there any number to his armies? Upon whom does his light not arise? How then can a mortal be righteous before God? How can one born of a woman be pure? If even the moon is not bright and the stars are not pure in his sight, how much less a mortal who is a maggot and a human being who is a worm? Job again took up his discourse and said, As God lives, who has taken away my right, and the Almighty, who has, taken, who has made my soul bitter, as long as my breath is in me and the Spirit of God is in my nostrils, my lips will not speak falsehood, and my tongue will not utter deceit. Far be it from me to say that you are right. Until I die, I will not put away my intensity from me. I hold fast my righteousness and will not let go. My heart does not reproach me for any of my days. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Let us say together Canticle 16, the Song of Zechariah, is found on page 92 in the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born in the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of those who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight, all the days of our life. You, my child, should be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the early compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second reading is from the book of Revelation. Then I looked, and there was the Lamb, standing on Mount Zion. And with him were 144,000 who had his name and his father's name written on their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven like the sound of many waters and like the sound of loud thunder. The voice I heard was like the sound of harps playing on their harps. And they sang a new song before the throne and before the four living creatures and before the elders. No one could learn that song except the 144,000 who have been redeemed from the earth. It is these who have not defiled themselves with women, for they are virgins. These follow the Lamb wherever he goes. They have been redeemed from humankind as first fruits for God and the Lamb, and in their mouth no lie was found. They are blameless. Then I saw another angel flying in mid-heaven with an eternal gospel to proclaim to those who live on the earth, to every nation and tribe and language and people. He said in a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, for the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. And I heard a voice from heaven saying, Write this. Blessed are the dead who from now on die in the Lord. Yes, says the Spirit, they will rest from their labors, for their deeds follow them. The word of the Lord. 
So to say together, Canticle 21, You Are God, is found on page 95 in the Book of Common Prayer. You are God. We praise you. You are the Lord. We acclaim you. You are the Eternal Father. All creation worships you. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you, the noble fellowship of prophets praise you, the white robe army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the holy church acclaims you, Father of majesty unbounded. Your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you did not shun the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people. Bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to the glory everlasting. A reading from Matthew. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hidden. No one after lighting a lamp puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter, will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same, will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. In looking at that reading from Matthew, I researched a couple of commentaries and I really like one by Reverend Kathy Walker. She emphasizes uh, the sentence in, in the gospel or the reading. Uh, in the same way, let your light shine to the, before others so that they may see your good work and give glory to your Father in heaven. And her whole commentary centers around that. Um, I've adapted and adjusted and edited from what she said to try to keep it more in tune with this particular Sunday and this particular uh, morning prayer. Twenty twenty has been a year of hurricanes, both literal and figurative. Storm surges have been crashing at our shoreline for most of the year. We have been pushed into and out of our shelters. For far too many, the waters have overtaken them, creating major loss of life due to pandemic-related illnesses. For others, the waves have crashed at the shoreline of social equity in a country that for too long has been determined to only respond during calm weather and low tide. As we wait for whatever the new normal is, God is extending an invitation for us to respond to those things which we can change, those things over which we do have some 
control. We may not know when we can fully return to in-person worship nationwide or to our workplaces, but we can attend to other urgent matters in need of our attention. Like St. John the Divine, many folks are currently searching for a roadmap leading to becoming the beloved community. That vision wherein all people may experience dignity and abundant life and see themselves and others as beloved children of God. There is no easy path, and a great deal of talking, discernment, and action are required to get to that promised land. There are times when conversations are difficult to have. Regularly, people struggle in even the closest relationships to say when they have been hurt or, they how, or how they have been offended. Sometimes people just walk away without ever expressing true feelings about the pain they have suffered because of the actions of others. When the conversation does not yield a desired result the very first time, there is a tendency to shrug it off and simply give up. The challenge is that when those conversations are avoided, it can leave behind a toxic culture that permeates a community needlessly. We never know which incident, after evading a point of conflict, will trigger the crashing of wind and waves once again at the shoreline. Matthew challenges us to become involved in tough conversations. And we are called to bravely stand up for what is right and against what is wrong and to raise our voices. We need to remember that God's roadmap provides strategies wherever conflicts develop. This particular passage is central to an understanding of how to stay in conversation at the most challenging times. Certainly St. John's is in such times. Many congregations within the Episcopal Church have been struggling to design programs that will lead to the world that Jesus preached about throughout his ministry. It is a daunting task. Were it easy, the work would have been completed years ago. Truly, it takes a lot of sheer will and great intentionality. It also requires a willingness to both talk and listen. Neither practice is easy, and yet it is possible to get closer to the goal with every attempt. On a large scale view amid a national pandemic, we should summon up the courage to address our issues, look at the root causes, and find solutions that will reorder how we live together in a harmonious and loving community that celebrates the depth and breadth of our beautiful communion. This is a remarkable moment in what we call the ordinary time of the church, locally and nationally, to model for the secular society what brave conversations that lead to healing look like. Jesus understood that healing involves taking some risks. Every time he dined with tax collectors and with Gentiles, people were enraged. It was unseemly for him to fraternize with the others, they thought. Yet, Jesus continued to preach about love for one another. In a year when many of the old societal norms have been challenged, the church is also tasked with confronting its own struggles. For those who feel that the church has sinned against them, Matthew recommends that such sin be called out, first privately, then in increasing public formats. We are at an inflection point where this work must be done with urgency. It can be done even at a time when in-person gatherings are conducted at a minimum. We can challenge ourselves to creatively determine how to facilitate dialogues internally with other congregations within our context and across denominations. On parish topics and on national issues, truth-telling creates vulnerability and sometimes leads to confrontations. Or perhaps, carefrontations, where we act with love to continue the dialogue. We must not give up. If we are ever going to arrive at low tide, where we love our neighbors as ourselves, we must all be willing to risk pain and suffering 
to get there. In an earlier chapter of Matthew, Jesus bids Peter step out in faith into the rough seas and come to him. Although the waves were crashing, Jesus beckoned Peter. He beckons us, his contemporary disciples, to step out in faith, to overcome our weaknesses, and find our way forward together. The goal of becoming the beloved community is not relegated to one or even a handful of congregations. There must be a focused and concerted effort for everyone to engage. It is clearly understood that the past cannot be undone. But the goal of studying and revisiting our history is to help better understand what happened and to learn from those mistakes. Too often, Dialogues lead to superficial work that is ultimately unsatisfying. Jesus is inviting us to dismantle this sin once and for all so that the afflicted may be healed forever. May God gently guide us all to a quiet shore where we can find the energy to listen to each other and develop a plan that leads to lasting change. say together the Apostles' Creed as found on page 96 in the Book of Common Prayer. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. From page 97, the Our Father. Our Father, who Lord art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us do suffrage B, which is found on page 98 in the Book of Common Prayer. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Cover them in the hope and now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy upon us, Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, Receive our supplications and prayers which you offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We pray for Betty, for Don, for Mary, for Cindy, for Lana, for Chris, for Marilyn, for 
Jimmy, for Tommy, for Jill, for Eva, for Pidge, for Eunice, for Ken, Debbie, John, Jane, Mary, Marilyn, Maggie, Estelle, Dolores, and David. We pray for those areas suffering from natural disaster, domestic and foreign violence, and from the pandemic and its effects. We pray for all nations as, as for all nations as they struggle to be better and to do better. Let us pray the general thanksgiving is found on page 101 in the Book of Common Prayer. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, are your loving servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and for all whom you have made. We bless you for your creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life but above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but with our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. And our last prayer comes from page 102, the prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Amen.